So welcome to everybody. Today's session will be on Python, the basics, and we're going to look at modules and list slicing, command lines, arguments, and how all these things works. And we're going to do a lot of examples. Uh, there is not a bunch of things to learn today, but uh, just learn to use uh, some of the basic stops uh, that would I uh, think will uh, help and the session also will be recorded and the video will be available on YouTube so people can ask questions in the chat or on the WhatsApp group or they can even add it up and do suggestion and speak up so everybody can listen can you hear me? I am not sure if the mic uh, produce enough sound. Yes, we, I can hear you very well. Oh, great. So let's start. The first thing is we have Python. Uh, Python programming language is is far more simpler uh, and beginner friendly um, in comparison to a C language. And also, it is a dynamically typed language. When you, in the C programming language, when you declare a variable, you have to define or clarify the types of data you're about to store in the variable. And that is not the case with Python. You can declare a variable and store whatever data type you want. And the interpreter will knows, um, will determine the types of the data stored in the variable. And though uh, also know what kind of operations you can perform on that data. So this is the fun part because you don't have to keep track of the types of the variables. You can pass any variables to everywhere, anywhere you want. Just make sure uh, that your program is well written. And also uh, you're uh, using the variables the way they should at a certain point of time. So let's start by declaring a variable, I'm going to declare a variable A and I will assign the value 1, B, 2. So the same operations we have in the C language, we have also the same here. Addition, subtraction, multiplications, we have all that. We also have some additional features like being able to add strings with the plus sign, uh, being able to plus list uh, to add to do an addition between uh, different data types without having to uh, create specific functions for those kind of tasks. So let's just uh, print a message as usual. I'm going to call this built-in function. And we display the variable A. And after that, we display the variable B. This is just for warm up. Now, the Python file, for the moment, if you look in the terminal, it is not an executable. So I'm going to make it executable so we can run it as a script. There is another important thing to add. This will be the hash. Um, I don't know what is the correct pronunciation. I think the hash bank tag um, in order to tell which program we should use or which Python version should be used to execute this file. Same as in the shell um, files where we specify the hash bank and the path to the interpreter, the bash. 
the same thing goes uh, here. But let me check which Python version or the path of the Python uh, file. So here on my computer, we have the Python executables located in the user bin Python directory. So I'm going to add that here. So now when this code, we make it executable, we change the permissions to mode the, the name of the Python file. it become an executable file. So it can be um, executed as like for bash. This is not a compiled code. It will be read by the Python interpreter and like for the bash script. So the difference between these, uh, the Python and the C language is that the code is compiled for the C language. It's compiled into binary code before execution. Uh, but now we have the interpreter uh, that just read the code and uh, do things with what we said in the instructions. Now let's run this program. We can say, um, we can execute it like that. Um, yes, there is an error. They say error uh, processing line one. Known type objects has no attribute loader. Um, I'm I did not expect this error, but let's run this code with the Python interpreter and pass in the file name itself. Yes, we have the same error again. I'm going to pause the recording and solve this problem. Okay, now there was some misconfiguration on my system. Uh, it's been solved. Now let's run this file, the main.py uh, file. And here we see that we've set the variable a to one and b to two, and then we use these built-in functions. So the built-in functions are functions that are available uh, for all your program. You don't have to import them or you don't have to declare them. They are just available. Uh, in contrast, in the C programming language, you would have to import uh, some library uh, so for you to be able to use some more advanced functions. So we have built-in functions and we also have libraries that can add up some additional features and you can even define your own libraries and functions. So here we have the print function. The print function allows you to display the value from a variable and it's take up some parameters. Uh, the first parameter, you can even pass the name of the variable or you can pass in uh, some formatted strings. Let's take an example. Let's say I have a string and I say, hello world. Then we display the string hello world. And that's it. What you also can notice is that the print function add a line break um, by default. You may sometime want to um, change this behavior, but uh, I want to copy the prototype of this function and explain one by one what each parameter serve and uh, what are they use. So we have the print 
function uh, so the first parameter So the first parameter is the object or the variable you want to display. I'm going to comment it here. The first parameter. And the second parameter is uh, what we call the separator. And the one that interests us is this, this, the, this parameter named end. So these are named parameters. You can set their values uh, by just specifying them in here. You can say the first parameter is a required parameter, so you cannot omit it, but all the other parameters have default values. But the one that we're going to use is the end. So you can say, and instead of ending the strings with a line break, we're going to decide to end it with an empty strings. Now let's display or run this program and see what's going to happen. And here you see, we have going to run it again. So you see when you run the main.py file, the hello world get displayed. And since we said we called the named parameter, we specify the name parameter called and then we say its value will be set to the empty string, then we don't have a line break. We can add another thing, whatever. For example, we can say cool. And when you run the program, you would see that it displays cool and the line break character. So it can be whatever strings you want. Now this is the basics, but what if you want to assign values from one variable to another variable? This is possible. You can, for example, say the first thing you we did here is a is equal to one. Later in the same program, you can also say a is equal to like hello. No error will occur. So we can use the print function to display the first value and display the other one. Same thing, no error. So the interpreter, Python knows what is the data type uh, at a certain point of time. Uh, what is the data type of this variable? There is some extra things we have. Let's say you have two strings, A, and let's say string, let's say name is equal to Ali. And you have another, uh, let's say this is the first name and this will be called the last name, Muhammad Ali. Now you can add the names, you can add strings in Python. You can say first name plus last name. And then you may decide to display it on the screen. And here we have Muhammad Ali. We see that these names are, uh, there is no space between the first name and the last name. So what we're going to do, we're going to add an additional space and here it is since by default the print function add a line break to the output this is why we have this line break after Muhammad Ali get displayed 
that's one thing. And there is another thing I want to grab your attention on is that in Python, there is no concept of character like in the C programming language. You have, let's say, every, in Python, everything is strings. Either we have a string with one character or we have a strings with no character or more than one character. In the C programming language, when you are saying that you want to um, define a character or assign a character to a variable like that, but in Python, this is considered to be a string with one with length one. So this is something we might want to keep in mind. Now there is another other things. This is the control flow statement. Uh, like in the C program language, we have the if statements, the for loop, the loops. Um, in Python, we have the if else statements, and we also have the for loop. Um, there is no do while loops, or let's say there is no other. I think there's only the four loops in the Python programming language. So you might want to use it in some kind of ways. And yes, the while loop. So we have the while loop in the Python programming language. The for loop and the while loop, also the if statement. We don't have the do while statement in the Python programming language. Let's do some example. Let's say we want to display uh, from one to 10. There is a way of doing that. We can either say for X in range, the start of the range, this is a built-in function we can call. It will return a sequence of integers. Um, you can say maybe a list of integer through which you can loop through. I'm going to explain and give another examples. So this will return the call to this function or this built-in function will return a sequence that will contain something like one, two, three, four, and till nine. So here the start and here is the end. The 10 will not be included in the return string, uh, in the return sequence. So the X will take the values one by one. And here we're going to display, it. let's say print X. Let's compile this code. And in the terminal, we have one, two, three, till nine. Now what happens if we want to display these things horizontally, not vertically? We know that the print function add the line break character by default, uh, the new line character by default to the output. We want to get rid of that. We're just going to say we wanted to add a space. And here it is one, two, three. There is no line break. But we wanted to add a line break when the loops um, is done. For that, we can call the print function and add the line break ourselves like that. And that's it. So here what's happened is we did not provide any parameter. We could provide a parameter for the first argument, but uh, the first argument might be an empty string. And since by default, the Python <coughs> set the lines ending to 
the line break, we don't need to specify the first one neither this, um, the end parameter. So this is a correct statement, but if you want to be more explicit, you can say the ending will be set to an empty string, but we want to display the, the line break. Let's compile this code. Same result. So this is an example of using the for loop. There is other ways of using that. For example, you can loop through a string. A string also is considered to be a sequence. Let's declare this variable called hello world. Um, S and we set its value to the string hello world and we can look through the strings like that for x or let's say a character in the strings we print the character and here we've displayed it vertically because by default, the print function add a line break to the output. We want to replace that with an empty string. And here, hello world. But in the string here, I might want to add the line break so the display is much more beautiful to look at. Great. So that is one way of using the for loop. We also have the while loop. I'm going to delay. So the for loop allows you to loop over sequence. And I think the last uh, project uh, we, we received, we have these things on sequence and list tuples. So the for loop allows us to loop through sequence-like objects. Now, we also have the while loop. An example would be, let's say, um, define, we're going to define a counter variable, then we set it to zero, then we say, while the counter is lesser than 10, we print the value of the counter, and after that, we increment the value, uh, we increment the counter by one. Then here it is. So this is an example of while loop. You might want to use the while loop if you don't know how many times you're going to execute an, extra, an instruction for example, you can create infinite loops with the while loop. For example, you can say um, while true, then we print the counter. But then we must, or we should have something to, to for breaking the loop. So I can say if the counter is equal is equal to 10, then we might want to break. So this is also an instruction that exists. The same syntax from the C program language, we also have the same in the uh, Python program language. They're very similar in terms of syntax. So that's it, same result. But here I wanted to add, say we don't want to add the line break. And at the end of the loop, we're going to add a line break. The end will be an empty string, so the default ending will not be added. Yes, one, zero, one, two, nine. So we have the for loop and we have the while loop. We also have the if statement. We have the if else statement and the else statement. For example, let's say age is equal to 10. 
So if a is lesser than five, for example, we say too young. If age L if so here we type L if this is else if if age is equal to five then we say this is a kid else this is a grown boy Then that's it. We're going to execute this program and we have this is a grown boy. So the if statement, we can even add more conditions. For example, let's say wealth. Um, yes, wealth. So the wealth we're going to say ten thousand. If age is lesser than five and wealth is greater, or let's say we can add the end condition or wealth is greater than than one thousand, that means this is a young wealthy if age is greater than five and wealth is greater than three hundred thousand then this is a healthy a wealthy kid then here else so we can add a condition but uh, here the wealth doesn't serve anything so we just say this is a random boy so we can add the conditions so if we have something like we can use also the or in the C program language we use this uh, ampersand sign for the end but in the Python we say end or like that and for the negation for example you want to negate this condition we use the not the not uh, keyword so make sure to add parentheses around your conditions so you don't get confused uh, in regard of which condition the not uh, operation is applied to. I always prefer to add parentheses around my conditions. You can combine conditions with the uh, logical operators and or and not. Now let's compile this code. Uh, run the code. Yes. So we have this is. Uh, this a uh, random boy yes there is a typo and this is uh, let's say the basics we can declare variables we can add integers values we can even concatenate strings using the plus operator we can use the for loops to loop over a sequence or a list. We can also use the while loop and we know that there is no do while loops in the Python program language. We have the control flow statement, the if, else if, and the else. Now next thing is functions. In the Python programming language, we can declare functions very easily. We might have something like, let's say, we want to declare functions to add two values. We have, uh, we use the keyword def. 
the names of the function and the list of parameters the function is about to receive. Let's say A, B. We don't have to specify the return type as for the C program language. We can just add up the, fun the values we say A plus B. return A plus B. The parentheses are not required, but for uh, good practice, we use parentheses whenever we return a value from a function. And later, we can call the same function. Sum is equal to add 19 to 20. And we display it using the print function, uh, the print function, yes. And that's it. So you have to be very careful to what you're, you're passing to this function and do not make mistakes because we don't have these type checking things. For example, if you say you're about to add, uh, let's say, a strings to a number, Let's compile it. An error occurs. So here we're trying to concatenate adding a strings to an integer. And that won't work. These are not the same object types. So what we um, do in order to be able to add integers to strings, we have to convert the strings, the integers to a strings first before being able to concatenate it with the strings or convert the string to an integer or a number before able to uh, being able to add it to a, another integer. So we have to make sure that the names of the function are descriptive enough so that the programmer um, do not get, uh, don't get lost. So that's one thing. The other thing is we can com 